Good morning, afternoon, and evening, ladies and gentlemen. Many thanks for coming to my presentation on comparison of numerical predictions for early age pre. My name is Zhang Li Hu, currently working in School of Material Science and Engineering at Southeast University. The work I'm going to present today was done together with Dr. Lezikowski and Professor Ruler when I was at EMPA, Switzerland. This presentation consists of four parts, as shown in the slide. After a brief introduction on early age creep, different models in the literature for creep numerical predictions will be illustrated. After that, the predicted creep results by using some typical models will be presented and discussed. Now, let's have a look at the early age creep. Creep is not a beautiful word, nor a novel concept in this field. I am not the first one who is saying that. Actually, it is a quote from a famous creep book by Navila, Delger, and Brookers. As now to most people, creep is an increase of deformation under constant load, which can be attributed to the viscoelastic behavior of concrete. It is essential to study it due to the fact that creep impacts the deformation of concrete. Thus becomes a critical factor for the risks of cracks and durability of concrete structures. Since it is a long-term property of concrete, it is also normal to perform the creep test for months or even years to see the deformation. Nevertheless, creep at early age is also worth paying attention to. Check this figure in the slide. You can easily notice that higher creep compliance at early age compared to that at later age. Such high creep development at early age of concrete surely influences the early age stress distribution, crack formation, and propagation. Study the early age creep and model it is of high importance. However, to accomplish that, two major difficulties we have to face with. Firstly, at early age, cement hydration is at the same time scale as the creep uh, evolution. Along with the undergoing hydration, complex microstructure is forming and changing with the degree of hydration. The creep of hydrating concrete depends on the loading time and also the evolving microstructure, so-called aging effect. When there is drying, much higher creep is also seen compared to the basic creep for sealed specimens. We often call this actual deformation induced by drying as picket effect. Note that drying creep is beyond the scope of this study. We only focus on the aging-based creep. Actually, taking into account the aging is already a challenging task for investigating especially modeling creep. Secondly, the fundamental mechanisms of creep at early age are still unclear, which also makes the modeling super difficult. Until now, many researchers propose different mechanisms. The most famous one is, of course, the solidification theory or micro pre stress solidification theory by Bazant and his colleagues. This theory assumes that the aging behavior is induced by the volume growth of the non-aging hydration products at different hydration time. Lee and her colleagues established the model of creep consider, considering the clinker dissolution in the main, is the main hydrate mechanism. Some other researchers believe the creep comes from the dislocation and sliding of the layered structure CSH and the C page or microdivision of water in the system. Recent study of uh, uh, Pignatelli suggests that the uh, dissolution and precipitation of hydrates under local stress is the actual mechanism. Well, in summary, the mechanism of creep is really still under debate. Even with the above mentioned two obstacles to overcome based on the mechanisms proposed, uh, some models exist in the literature for aging uh, basic creep. Here, I listed some important ones. The first one is the solidification model based on the solidification theory. Bazan and his colleagues also proposed uh, B3 and B4 models, which nowadays used widely in practice. In 2000, 
based on the equivalent time concept. The shutter and the DOE uh, developed the fictitious time or fictitious degree of hydration method. Also, rheological models with aging factors were used quite commonly for creep modeling, such as Kelvin models or Maxwell models, consists of springs and dashboards. Developed from the classical HV type uh, matrix inclusions problems, the multi scale homogenization method is another useful tool for creep modeling. Besides, another method is the microstructural modeling uh, with finite element method. I don't know if you ever wonder which method is the best one or not. For me, different types of methods uh, are based on different theories and may be suitable for different situations, meaning that it is hard to compare. However, the modeling process of the first three methods are actually similar. Therefore, our goal in this study is to compare the predicted uh, results based on the same set of experiments using these three methods. Now, let me quickly explain the modeling processes of the three methods. In the solidification model, we used the formulation for creep strain at time t as shown in the slide. The microscopic creep compliance is a non-aging function that depends on the loading duration and the aging effect is thereafter only associated with the volume fraction of the hydrates. In this study, we applied three Kelvin point units for fitting. For simplicity, only viscoelastic deformation was considered without this vicious part. In the fictitious time or fictitious degree of hydration model, the basic idea is as follows. At subsequent time, when a new load is applied, the corresponding creep response can be considered as the creep of material starting from uh, the fictitious time or fictitious degree of hydration. And this time is between the previous loading time and the current loading time. The basic creep curve of the material under constant load was estimated with the following uh, expression. And the critical step in this creep prediction using this model is to estimate this fictitious time and fictitious degree of hydration. And to do that, we actually use the equation suggested by the Deschutter and his colleagues. And this estimation is just based on the fitting of the experimental creep result under constant loading. In the rheology model with age-dependent parameters used in this study, generalized Kelvin void models uh, composed of three Kelvin void units and one additional uh, dashboard was employed. The Kelvin void units account for the uh, short-term creep, while the additional dashboard accounts for the, the long-term creep. The incremental base creep strain at early ages can be calculated based on the three equations shown in the slide. This flow chart explains the calculation steps which uh, estimate the incremental strain and stress at each time steps. Note that this model, the stiffness of the uh, spring and the viscosity of the dashboard are all age dependent. To compare the different models, experimental creep results of cement paste with the water cement ratio of 0.35 were used. The creep result on the constant loading at different loading age uh, were used to determine the parameters in different models, and the results under the stepwise loading was, were used to verify the model. Now let's have a look at the result. With the present uh, parameters, the solidification model underestimates the creep strain compared to the experimental results. And this underestimation is mainly caused by the inaccurate prediction of creep under the first two loads. Similar situation occurs to the one predicted by fictitious model. While using the incremental uh, rheology model, thanks to the age-dependent parameters, it seems that this predict result agrees reasonably well with the experimental result, especially at a later age. 
Now, let's plot all the predicted results together and including the superimposed creep result as a function of time and as a function of degree of hydration. The calculation with superimposed creep results of materials under constant load overestimates the creep strain by about 450 micrometer per meter. This overestimation is to be expected since this approach does not really take, take into account the loading history. In conclusion, with the simple assessment of different uh, uh, models, we can see all models underestimated creep at early age. To be honest, all the models are extensively dependent on the fitting results of the experimental data, especially when the fitting results covering a long-term duration. Of course, more systematic experimental results are necessary to have a better assessment of different uh, creep uh, models. However, one thing is clear that the uh, establishing mechanism-related models are of high necessity, which considers the CSH deformation and seepage of water. Therefore, to finish my presentation, I would like to introduce some promising work which can be helpful for finding the mechanism-related models. The first one is related to the viscoelastic behavior of CSH. In our previous work, we used both the micro-indentation test on synthetic CSH compacts and the downscale uh, finite element modeling uh, to obtain the intrinsic um, viscoelastic behavior of CSH. Now we found that CSH uh, with different calcium to silica ratios has similar intrinsic viscoelastic behavior. I don't have enough time to give you more details, but if you are interested, uh, you are welcome to refer to our two publications in CCR. In terms of the water distribution, the work by Dr. Vizekowski with proton animal is also of high importance. He basically proved that under both thermal and uh, mechanical loading, the water migrates from the drill to the uh, capillary space in cement paste. Further work should be done on how to implement these experimental studies to develop models for early age creep. All right, that's all. Thank you for the organizers and the audience. If you have any questions, I am more than happy to answer.